Welcome to worship at Christ the Lord on Sunday, June the 6th, 2021, the second Sunday in Pentecost. We hope everyone had a lovely four-day weekend, and we wish the best to Pastor Mike and Joy as they take a few days away. We're glad you're here, you're here with us. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Let us pray. All-powerful God, in Jesus Christ, you turn death into life and defeat into victory. Increase our faith and trust in him that we may triumph over all evil in the strength of the same Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Reading from Genesis, the third chapter. Adam and Eve heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I, com I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you among all the animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, 
and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If you were to keep watch over sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet with you is forgiveness in order that you may be feared. I wait for you, O Lord, my soul waits. In your word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who keep a watch for the morning, more than those who keep a watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love. With the Lord there is plenteous redemption. For the Lord shall redeem Israel from all their sins. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went home, and the crowd came together again, so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man, then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly, I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Tom's journey home from work takes him over a bridge each day. Well, one day on this walk, he sees a man about to jump off. And so Tom hurries to him and says, what are you doing? And the man says, I'm ending it all. There's nothing worth living for. And Tom says, wait, wait, hold up. Let's talk about this. Are you a man of faith? And the fellow says, well, as a matter of fact, yes, I am. And he says, well, this is great. This is great. Are you Protestant or Catholic? And he says, well, I'm Protestant. Tom says, that's great. That's great. Okay, so are you Episcopalian, Baptist, or Lutheran? And the man says, I'm Lutheran. And Tom is getting so excited, and he goes, this is so good. I'm a Lutheran too. He goes, are you the Lutheran Church of God or the Lutheran Church of the Good Lord? 
The man says, well, I'm the Lutheran Church of God. He says, that's great. Okay, are you the original Lutheran Church of God or the Reformed Lutheran Church of God? The man says, well, I'm the Reformed Lutheran Church of God. And Tom's excitement continues to grow, and he says, are you the Reformed Lutheran Church of 1789 or the Reformed Lutheran Church of 1815? And the guy says, I'm the Reformed Lutheran Church of 1789. Tom walks over, puts both hands on his back, hollers out, die, heretic scum, and pushes him off the bridge. It's okay to laugh. It's a joke. And that's the subvers subversive thing about humor. It's the little bit, the spoonful of sugar that helps the medicine go down. Because even as we laugh at Tom, we see ourselves in him a bit. We see that we carry our own biases and prejudices, artificial and ungodly divisions that we create. And what could have been an opportunity for life instead becomes deadly ground. Tom could have seen the Imago Dei, the image of God in this fellow human being, but instead he saw only an adversary, an enemy, a threat that had to be eliminated. And that is certainly the truth of our human condition. We do not see the image of God in one another. We blame Adam and Eve, especially Eve, for all of this, because as the story goes, they were living in paradise, in perfect relationship with God, their maker. But that was not enough for them. They wanted more, or at least they thought they did. And so they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What happened then? Their eyes were open. Human perception changed. Nothing else changed. Only human perception. They were naked before, but they were not ashamed. We read in chapter 2, verse 25, and the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. But then along comes chapter 3, and the crafty serpent. And with his encouragement, they partake of the forbidden fruit, their eyes are open, and they see that they are naked, and they feel exposed and vulnerable. These creatures, made in the image of God, can no longer stand to look upon each other. They are ashamed. And so they immediately grab some fig leaves and try to cover their shame. And then they hear God coming, and what do they do? First they hide, and then they blame. So imagine this. That verse is beautiful. God is walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. Imagine a parent coming home at the end of a busy day, longing to greet her children, to hug them, to hold them, to feed them, to play and laugh together. But these children are hiding. And so God calls to them and questions them. Note that there is no accusing or anger or judgment, just questions. Where are you? Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? What is this that you have done? All of these questions are a plea from God. Come back into the conversation with me. God already knows the answer to each of these questions, but he wants Adam and Eve to be naked and honest and vulnerable with him again. But they are ashamed because they know they have lost something that was essential to their original character. 
No longer do they live in perfect union with their creator. And that union was the basis for their perfect relationship with one another. It's the vertical relationship that makes possible all horizontal relationship. Love God, love the neighbor. You cannot do the latter without the former. So if we read on in verses 14 to 19, we often mistake this as God's judgment for their actions. But God is not judging. God is simply declaring what they have created in their desire to be wise. They have severed the vertical relationship with God, and they've tried to put this horizontal framework in its place. And rather than seeing each other as the image of God, they now see difference. And as they see this difference, they evaluate it and they judge it and they prioritize it. And that leads to power struggles. Power over fellow creatures. And that leads to abuse, discrimination, injustice, alienation to lives lived in fear and shame. Because when we try to derive our identity from these horizontal relationships, we are caught in a process that is constantly fraught with anxiety. Spouse to spouse, father to son, mother to daughter, employer to employee, neighbor to neighbor. There's always this friction because there is fear and shame and uncertainty. And so we may try to blame Adam and Eve, but we know that we are the same because we live in this condition, this struggle where God has been displaced and we've put ourselves in the place of creator. The first commandment given to us is, you shall have no other gods. And Luther says, what does this mean? It means we are to fear, love, and trust God above all things but we cannot. Despite our best efforts, we cannot do it. We cannot fear, love, and trust. We fear what others may think of us more than we fear God. And we hide ourselves behind fig leaves to project the images that we think are acceptable to the world. We love success and the praise of humans more than we love God. We trust our little gods, money, status, relationship, material goods, healthy lifestyles, good works. The possibilities are limitless for the little gods that we worship and trust more than our creator. In other words, we kick God out of creator role and take over creating ourselves but we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Any creating without God is in vain. Fortunately, we have a God who loved us so much that this is not the end of our story. The creator of the universe lowered himself and took on our dusty form to make a new way. And then he commanded us to love God and love one another because the two are inseparable. When we love God, we perceive the image of God in our neighbor, and the love just spills over. If we do not love the neighbor, we do not love God. This is what Jesus taught us. This is what Jesus showed us. And what does that look like to the world? Well, in our gospel lesson today, people are claiming that Jesus has gone out of his mind. So what on earth has he done to lead them to this conclusion? If you read the chapters prior to today's reading, you'll see just how crazy he's gone. He's commanded an unclean spirit to leave a man. He's healed Peter's mother-in-law and a lot of other people who were sick. He cleansed a leopard, uh, not a leopard, a leper. (laughs) He healed a paralytic and he restored a withered hand. This is crazy stuff, hey? Running around healing and restoring. 
and bringing wholeness to a broken world? In all of this, Jesus was fulfilling the law, and it got him in a lot of trouble. The world didn't like that. Because our human condition resists the first commandment. We cannot fear, love, and trust God above all things. We want to shape the world to our desires, to create power structures that obscure the imago day in the neighbor and deny healing and wholeness to all of God's people. We stay locked into our prejudices. And like Tom, we push each other into despair because of ungodly divisions. But thank God that these divisions have been overcome and our nakedness is no more. In baptism, we are clothed clothed with Christ and there are now no more divisions, neither Jew nor Greek, male, female, free or slave, for all are one in Christ. And clothed with Christ, we see only the Imago Dei, the image of God in our neighbor. And then our identity is established as the family of God, the people who do the will of God. And that's only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit who moves among us, who indwells us, whose generative power restores the unity between the creature and the creator and helps us in our struggle to love, fear, and trust God above all things. And Jesus makes this possible because Jesus loved us first. Jesus chose us. And by the way and the grace of Jesus Christ, a new path is made that returns us into the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Our nakedness is no longer cause for shame. We have been given robes of salvation So when God calls, where are you? We don't have to fear. We don't have to hide. We don't have to blame. We can simply say, here I am. Because right then we are drawn back into the dance of the Trinity. Relationship is restored, and we see ourselves as God sees us, loved, forgiven, redeemed. And once again, our eyes are open, but this time to see beyond division and to see our neighbor anew as the very image of God in our midst. And then by the grace of God, we pull each other back from the edge. We snatch each other from the jaws of death and we hold on tight to one another. Then as one In the spirit, we are able to span the differences between us. We can defeat death, despair, hunger, racism, war, injustice. This evil of the world can only be overcome in Christ. And so we journey onward from here, sent forth in mission with God to bring healing and wholeness to our neighbors and all of God's creation. Amen. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. 
God of wholeness, we pray for believers all over the globe, especially our friends in Tanzania and Oringa. Unify us in service of the gospel, that we may work together as beloved siblings to share your love with all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the cosmos, we pray for creation, the gardens, waterways, and creatures near to us and divorce, diverse forms of life that remain unseen. Teach us to treat the natural world with reverence, seeking restoration when human divisions have caused harm to your beloved creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all people, we pray for harmony among the nations. Cast out from us unclean spirits of greed and fear that we may work in solidarity with one another for the common good. Protect the missing children in Nigeria and guide leaders in wisdom to care for the most vulnerable among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of abundance, we pray for those who are, who are oppressed or in any need. Encourage those who have begun to lose heart. Strengthen and renew us with your spirit. Bring healing to all, especially Rich, Dick, Steve, Bud, Anne, Kate, Catherine, Charles, Ken, Catherine, Stu, Michelle and Ryan, George, Jaron, Tom, Tony, Patsy, Stacy, Terry, Robert, Larry, Sean, June, Kristen, Scott, Susan. Donna, Gwen, Michael and Teresa, Jory Lester, Mike, Kirsten, Lois, Steve, Paul, George, Sheila, Larry, Amanda, Rick, Kathy, Joe, Ellen, Randy, Paul, Tom, Debbie, Mary. Ellen, John, Martha, Joel, Jeff, Ollie, Stephanie, Brett, Mary Lou, Rod, Mary Sue, Judy, Scott, Ron, Joel, Ruth, Jean, Donna, Jean. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of righteousness, we pray for this holy house of worship. Set our gaze upon things eternal, that in thanksgiving for your mercy, we may extend grace to more and more people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, in your goodness, you have sent us faithful witnesses for every time and place. We give you thanks for those saints who now rest in your eternal mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen.
Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you give us a table to prepare yourself and call us to the peace of God. to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we remember the Lord's death until he comes again. pray together in the words which our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we have ever asked. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.